Hi, I'm Adam Culp and you're at BeachCast. I'm going to show you how to install Laravel on Ubuntu using Docker, and then we're going to set up a development environment for beginners. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. If you want to learn more about programming and spe more specifically about web development, think about subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell so you won't miss a thing. Afterwards, go out to our website and subscribe to the newsletter so you'll know when anything happens here at BeachCast. Also, please remember to like the video by clicking the thumbs up button. I appreciate that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, there's a couple different ways to install Laravel. Uh, one way is to do it globally. That way you can use Laravel to create your projects and start new things. And so I'm going to go ahead and show that way. Uh, first off, I'm in my terminal here. And in the terminal window, uh, in the terminal window, I'm in my project directory. That's not really super important, but what I need to do is I want to uh, issue the command to Composer to install Laravel in a global way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Composer uh, Global, because we want it to do this globally, require Laravel installer. Right? And by doing that, then it's going to reach out to packages to figure out what it needs to install, and it's going to go ahead and install Laravel within the Composer uh, directory. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I am doing this on Ubuntu. So this is going to be slightly different for Windows or a Mac. Um, I'm doing it on Ubuntu. So let me go ahead and hit enter and it'll go ahead and do that install. So we'll wait while that happens. And didn't take too long. I've installed it previously. So, uh, so it already had most of this stuff uh, cached. So now we've got the install. And so now at this point, um, I would be able to issue Laravel commands. However, there's one more thing that I need to do uh, in order to use Laravel from the command line, I do need to add it to my path. So um, now there's a few different ways to do this. On Ubuntu, uh, if you're using bash, you could update the uh, .bash rc. You could also uh, update the .bash underscore profile or just the underscore or dot profile rather. Um, now, as in this example, I'm, I use the .bash RC uh, for most of my bash configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, oh, I need to go up one directory because I'm in my projects directory. And then I'm going to do vi bash RC. And then I want to go down to the bottom of the file, which I am. And in the bottom of the file, I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, first off, an if condition. And then I'm going to tell it where to find everything. So let me go ahead and paste this in here. Let's see. All right. So now what I've done here is I pasted in an if condition. So I have an if the condition, it's looking to see if this directory exists. And that is in my home directory, it's looking for dot config slash composer slash vendor slash bin. If it finds that directory in, in my, if it finds that subdirectory of my home directory, then it's going to go ahead and add it to my existing path. So you can see here we're taking path and then we're appending and we're appending the uh, composer bin to my path. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now it is saved in my bash RC. However, because I've saved it in my bash RC, I now need to close my terminal and reopen it again. And by doing that, then uh, I now have Laravel in my path. So if I issue the command Laravel, uh, list, for instance, uh, uh, might help if I type it correctly. Laravel list, we see that Laravel is in my path. It's now bringing up the commands or the various things that I can do with Laravel. Uh, the available commands are help, list, and new. New, of course, would be for creating a new Laravel application. Um, now, alternatively, 
<clears throat> if I wanted to do that, well, first off, let's go ahead and, and, and create our application first. So I'm going to go ahead and CD into my project because that's where I that's where I keep my projects that I'm working on with Beachcast. Now in this directory, I would uh, just type in Laravel uh, new and I'm going to type in the app name. So we're just going to call this uh, Laravel because I'm going to I'm going to use that as my application name. Laravel new Laravel. And now it's going to go out and catch all my dependencies off of Packagist and create a Laravel application in that location. And it says that it uh, the application is ready. So now if I if I list that directory, let me start back again. If I list that directory, I see I have an expressive app from a previous recordings. You remember I was creating an expressive application and I also have a Laravel uh, directory, which was just now created. And that is my Laravel application. Now, alternatively, what I could have done um, is I could have issued the composer command composer create project and excuse me, and told it to create the Laravel application that way versus having Laravel locally installed. But having Laravel locally installed does make it easier to add new applications. Um, so that's so that's why I did it that way as the example. Uh, however, I, I could have just used Composer Create Project the same as with any other framework. Um, so, so now that I've got this here, if I change directory into the Laravel uh, directory, list everything, sure enough, I have all my files there. Now, um, You'll notice one of the things that are listed here is Artisan, right? Artisan is one of the one of the files that are located here. And with that being there, it now al allows us to be able to issue commands to Artisan. So if we say PHP Artisan and list, for instance, then we can see a list of all the different things that that Artisan script now allows us to do. And you can see there's a lot of things here from from uh, uh, creating various uh, list commands as well as other things. We can uh, get the app name, we can mess with the caches, configuration, events. We can also have the availability of making things like auth and, uh, and jobs. Uh, there's a lot of different commands here that Artisan gives us and, and that is working. So we know that the install is good. Um, now, another thing that we can do with that is, of course, we can list the uh, we can use Artisan to serve up the application. Uh, and we can do that by typing PHP Artisan serve. And by typing PHP Artisan serve, it, uh, it uses the PHP, creates a web server. And now if I go in a browser to that URL, which is uh, 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 8000, the port 8000, we can see that we do in fact have the Laravel application up and running. This is the default landing page for the Laravel application. Now, what I want to do though, is I don't want to, I don't want to just be able to develop locally like this using the, the PHP's built-in web server. Instead, I want to use Composer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Composer or Docker Compose configuration to do this. Now, as one of the things that I do also need to do is I need to make sure that inside the Docker containers, the permissions are set up correctly. Um, in Docker, permissions are a little bit different than if you're using uh, the application locally. So we need to change some settings here. Specifically, uh, what we need to change is there's two directories. There's the bootstrap directory and there's also the storage directory. Uh, those two directories need to have different permissions so that way the web server can use them in the way that we would anticipate. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter those permissions. Uh, first off, I'm, I'm also noticing that I'm using a different profile here. Let me go bigger so now we can now we can see all of our directories and everything much larger. Uh, again, it's the it's the bootstrap and also the storage directories that we need to alter permissions on. And how we're going to do that is right now they have permissions. I have permissions. Adam Culp, Adam Adam Culp. So uh, Adam Culp being the user and Adam Culp being the group. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give the web server permissions for those two directories so it can create you know, the things uh, appropriate, uh, appropriately. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to issue the command sudo chown and we're going to do it recursively for these two directories and we want to take oh, www data and www data for the bootstrap directory and also for the storage directory. All right. And then of course I have to enter a password. Okay, so now it's issued the, the permissions for those two directories. And if we look at those, sure enough, we see that the in those directories, oops, in the storage directory, it is now owned by www.data. And the bootstrap directory, same thing, is now owned by www.data. All right, so that worked out fine. Uh, we're no longer in the web server, but for me to get things up and running with Docker, I need to, first off, I need to create a Docker Compose file. So in, in this directory, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use VI to do this. So it's a little bit of command line work, but uh, not, not too bad. So VI, uh, Docker Compose .yml. And then I need to populate this file. Okay, so in the, with the Docker Compose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and just paste that in as it is. Uh, and we can see here that I've got a web server and a database server. Uh, the web server is just set up with some environmental variables for the uh, MySQL connections. We can see here that I've set it up to use port 8080. Um, and I'm, I'm expecting a, a volume to be to uh, slash var. Uh, slash www and i can see that it depends on uh, a, a container called db and in db we're going to be using mysql uh, 5.7 and then i've got some other settings in there now uh, one of the things you'll notice here is i'm also looking for a docker file in a directory called container hyphen build slash web slash docker file so i'm going to go ahead and save this file so now we've got the docker compose created um, so one of the things that I want to do then is I want to create a, uh, I'm going to create a directory called container build. I'm going to change into that container build. And I'm going to make another directory uh, called web. Feed into that. And of course there's nothing in there, just created the directory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a, a file, a Docker file. I'm going to create a Docker file. All right. So now in this Docker file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify everything that needs to happen in order to build um, the, the web server, everything needed to build the web container uh, I need to put in this Docker file. So I'm going to go ahead and, and copy from here. And we can see that first off, uh, I'm going to base it on PHP. 7.2 using Apache. Uh, I'm also going to uh, do an update. I'm going to tell it's, it's using Ubuntu. So using Ubuntu, I'm going to tell it to update. I'm going to tell it to install. It's going to install VI. It's going to install Git, uh, install the MySQL client, and also install zip. Uh, and then we're also going to install some extensions that I typically use in my development, zip, MySQL I, and then PDO MySQL. I'm also going to install Xdebug. Um, I'm going to then update my configuration with uh, xdebug, uh, and then I'm going to uh, run Composer if and make sure that it has all the dependencies and everything. Uh, and then I'm going to change my working directory to slash var slash www. Uh, now up here, uh, you'll notice that I am actually specifying that slash var slash www slash html is actually going to be slash var slash www slash public because in the Laravel application slash public is our document root that is where our front controller is located so we want to make sure that that is what is being served uh, by Apache so now I'm going to go ahead and save this file so now we've got our docker file there and I'm back into Laravel uh, Laravel root directory we can see all the all the stuff there we can see that uh, container build now exists here. We've also got our uh, Docker Compose file. 
So at this point, I now have all my configurations in place and I can issue the command docker compose, oop, docker compose up. And now what it's going to do is it's going to create the images and create or use the images, create more images, and it's going to create a container off of those. So that way we can serve up the application. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit that, let that run for just a moment. It's downloading all the images it's going to need in order to create the containers. And we'll be back in just a moment after all that finishes. Okay, we're back. So that took about a minute and a half, but I didn't make you sit through all that. I, I cut it and we can see that right now in our in our terminal, it's just, it's waiting for commands. Everything's up and running, the container's working, everything's there. Um, there weren't any errors that popped up on the screen. So at this point, the web server should be uh, serving up a Laravel application. Now, if we come back here, you remember um, right now I've got uh, it set to uh, port 8000, which is what we used when we used the uh, artisan serve. But I need to change that because in the Docker container, I had it set to use port 8080. So I'm updating my URL for that now. And if I hit enter, sure enough, we get our Laravel application. So it's up and working. We now have a development environment ready for us to start developing. And we're using Docker to serve all this up. There are a lot more other settings. There's a lot more things that we can do with this. But again, this is just the basics. We now have Laravel installed. We have a Docker container providing it for us. And that's all I'm going to do in this video. Please check back for future videos. Remember to subscribe for the to the channel so that way you're alerted when I create more videos because I'm going to be doing some more videos and I'm gonna build out a Laravel application uh, one episode at, at a time doing things very similar to how I did with Zend Expressive uh, over the last few months. So now if you're interested in seeing how I built a, a REST API using Zend Expressive, go back and check that um, and see how that, that worked out using middleware to create a REST API. Uh, and check back in the future for more Laravel content. And, uh, and then I'm gonna be creating other videos with yet other frameworks and libraries as well. Uh, this one is, is, happens to be about Laravel. So thank you for coming. I look forward to doing more. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you have any thoughts on the way that I just installed this. Do you install Laravel in a different way? Um, I know that are, there are many people who use Homestead and they use Laravel in VMs. Um, I prefer to use Docker containers, so that's why I showed it this way. But, but let me know your mileage. Let me know how it works. I look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you.